The question says that consider the sequence of machine instructions given below and you are given the four instruction multiply, divide, add, subtract with the corresponding three registers. Okay. So in the above sequence R0 to R8 are general purpose registers. In the instructions shown, first register stores the result of the operation performed on the second and third registers. Okay. So in all these instructions, the first operand will be storing the result and the operation would be performed on the second and third operands. Okay. This sequence of instructions is to be executed in a pipeline processor with the following stages. There are four stages which are named as instruction fetch and decode or IF, operate, operand fetch which is OF, perform operation which is PO and write back the result which is denoted by WB. So IF, OF and WB that means instruction fetch operand fetch and write back the result. These three stages take one clock cycle each whereas the perform operation PO stage takes one clock cycle for add or subtract, three clock cycles for multiply but five cycles for division. Okay, the processor uses operand forwarding from the PO stage to the OF stage. Okay, the number of clock cycles taken for the execution of the above sequence is. Alright, so it's a numerical type question. You have to fill in the calculated answer in the given blank. So, while starting with this question, one formula or one concept that you need to know is about operand forwarding. When we solve this question, you will come across a situation when operand forwarding would be used and at that time I'll explain you what it is and how it is used here. So we'll start with the, the first instruction. Let me write down the numbering of the clock cycles like this. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, so this is the instruction 1. Let's say I1. Instruction 2 instruction 3 and instruction 4. So if we start with the first instruction what would be performed? All the four stages would be performed but since it is a multiplication instruction the first, second and the fourth stage would take one clock cycle but the perform operation PO stage would take three clock cycles. So initially I perform IF that means I fetch the instruction and decode it then I fetch the operand then this to execute this instruction I need to perform the operation so perform operation will take three clock cycles all right and then I write the result WB okay since this is the first instruction to be executed therefore we'll execute it in simultaneous 6 clock cycles 1 to 6. Now comes the second instruction. Since it is a pipeline instruction, therefore we cannot start the fetching of instruction, the IF stage, before the stage, this instruction fetch phase for the previous instruction has finished. Okay, so only in the second clock cycle we can start fetching the second instruction of division so i start fetching the second instruction here then what i have to do i have to fetch the operand i can fetch the operand in the next cycle because after the second clock cycle i can perform the operand fetch stage now i have to perform this operation performing the operation takes five clock cycles but in these clock cycles, in the clock cycle 4 and 5, it cannot be done. I cannot do the perform operation stage because already in these clock cycles, the previous instruction is being performed and only when the previous instruction is finished, I can take up the second instruction. Okay, now since the perform operation instruction takes 5 clock cycles, therefore we'll it will use 5 clock cycles here till clock cycle number 10 and then 
the result would be written back. So we need more clock cycles. We'll write the numbers here. All right, so the second instruction has also been completed. Now coming to the third instruction. Now, one thing you must notice is that the first and the second instruction did not have any overlapping operands, okay? So the first instruction used R1, R0 and R5 and division. the second instruction performed division on R2, R3 and R6. But when we come to the third instruction, the third instruction is using R7, R5 and R6 and this R6 is the value that was returned by the previous instruction. So basically the result of the division operation was stored in R6 and we need this value R6 as the operand in the next instruction. So now what you would think is that as long as this division operation and the result is not executed or calculated and written back to the memory, we cannot perform the next operation. Here, operand forwarding comes into picture. So basically, operand forwarding is used in such situations when the next instruction makes use of an operand which is the result of the previous instruction. Okay, so instead of making the next instruction when i say next instruction i'm referring to this add instruction and this is the previous division is the previous instruction that i'm referring to so instead of making this next instruction the add instruction to wait uh, after the writing back of result of the previous instruction we allow operand forwarding that means we allow that the result that is calculated is directly available in this register R6 before it is actually written to the memory. So let's write down and understand how it will happen. Instruction I3 starts with the first stage which is instruction fetch and decode and we can only start after the previous instruction fetch is complete. So I start here but I cannot fetch the operands R5 and R6 because currently they are not available and they'll only be available in normal cases without operand forwarding they would be available at this point after the previous uh, instruction has written the result but with operand forwarding they would be available before the writing of the result of the previous instruction to the memory and at the end of the perform operand perform operation stage so we can fetch the operand here okay so you can say that this operand performance or performing of the operation of the previous instruction completes at the rising edge and we can fetch the operand at the falling edge of the same clock cycle all right so you must remember that the result of the previous instruction in case of operand forwarding is directly copied to the register that is expected in the next instruction before reflecting the results into the memory and this saves one clock cycle because if there would not have been any operand forwarding we would have fetched the operand at clock cycle number 12 okay after the after it has been written by the previous instruction to the memory now we can continue after operand fetch stage we perform the operation since it is addition so only a single clock cycle would be used and then we write the op result to the memory now coming to the fourth instruction the fourth instruction would start the fetching I if phase on only when uh, the previous if phase has been completed okay so it will start from clock cycle number four can we fetch the operands see here it is making use of r8 r7 and r4 and again r7 this operand is being used by the previous instruction that means the subtract instruction uses r7 and r7 is the result of the previous addition instruction so instead of waiting 
after the writing of R7 to memory, we directly fetch the operand at this stage after the operation of addition is performed. All right. So we fetch the operand at clock cycle number 11. Operand fetch. Then we perform the operation and then we write back the result. So this is how all these four instructions would be executed. A total of 13 clock cycles are required to perform all these instructions and the concept of operand forwarding is clearly highlighted here. Okay, so operand forwarding means that if the execution of next instruction is dependent on the result of previous instruction, then the resultant data is directly put or copied to the required register of the next instruction. Consider a processor with the byte addressable memory. Assume that all registers including the program counter and program status word are of size 2 bytes. A stack in the main memory is implemented from memory location 0100 which is specified in hexadecimal and it grows upwards okay so you are given a stack that is starting from 0100 which is hex and it grows upwards so we'll add items to it like this so and it grows upwards the stack pointer points to the top element of the stack the current value of stack pointer is 016e so there are certain elements in the stack and the current value is pointed by the topmost element is pointed by the stack pointer and the current value is 016e which is again in hexadecimal all right so the call instruction is of two words the first word is the opcode and the second word is the starting address of the subroutine that will be called okay and one word is two bytes so when we'll call or the instruction call is executed it will use two words two words means two into two that is equal to four bytes okay four bytes the call instruction is implemented as store the current value of PC in the stack, store the value of program status word register in the stack and load the starting address of the subroutine in PC. The contents of PC just before the fetch of a call instruction is these. So we have a PC register, the program counter register and its contents just before the fetching of the call instruction is 5FAO, which is again a hexadecimal value. After execution of the call, the value of SP is. All right. So here we just have to tell that after the call instruction is executed, what will be the new value of the stack pointer? So we have to see how the call instruction is implemented. When the call instruction is implemented, the first step is we have to store the current value of PC in the stack. Now, since it was given to you that both PC and program status word registers are of two bytes each. Okay, so no matter what is the current value of PC, whatever value will be put into the stack, it will take two bytes. All right, so the first step of storing the current value of PC into the stack would lead to an increment of 2 into the current value of SP. So what is the current value of SP? 016E and storing PC contents into the stack would, sorry, would increment the value by 2 units, 2 hexadecimal units. And why 2 hexadecimal units? Because each the size of the program counter register as well as the PSW register is given to you as two bytes. So it will come out to be 0170 in hex. All right. Now the next step is to load and the, to store the value of program status word register in the stack. Again, 
whatever no matter what is the value of program status word the value of the stack pointer will be incremented by 2 bytes on storing PSW register. So the current value is 0170 plus 2 bytes for PSW. This is for PSW. The earlier one was for PC. Okay. This will result into 0172 hexadecimal. Okay. The third step is load the starting address of the subroutine in PC. Now this third step is not affecting the stack contents or it is not uploading anything or putting anything additional into the stack. It is just changing the value of this PC. So the final value of stack pointer would be this 0172 hexadecimal. So the correct answer here is or the correct option is the D option. So this is a pretty easy question. You just have to directly calculate what how the stack pointer would be incremented. Though the question looks lengthy, please don't do this mistake of looking at the question, finding it lengthy and leaving it. Sometimes in such questions, there are a lot of uh, question, the lines in the question are too much because they are explaining you minute details so that you don't get confused at any step. But actually the question is as simple as this one. Okay. So I request you all the students that please at least give a quick reading to every question and then proceed by finalizing that you have to attempt it or go ahead. Okay. So that's all for today's lecture. Thank you for watching this video. Please let us know in the comment section below how did you find it and share it with your friends if you understood the question. Subscribe to the channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more tutorials on various computer science related subjects as well as our preparation series on such competitive exams. Press the bell icon to get the latest notifications of our upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Good luck.